All right. Hi, everybody. Um, this is the Jenkins online meetup. Um, today is Thursday, August 29th, 2024. Our session today is on Jenkins and Google's Summer of Code. We are focusing on the final project status and demos. My name is Alyssa Tong. I'm one of the org admins. Um, two other org admins are also on this webinar with me. They are Chris Stern and Bruno Verachten. We also have our GSOC um, lead mentors on here as well. Valentin, Delay, Delay. Uh, and um, Chris Stern is also a mentor along with our contributors, um, GSOC contributors who you will get to meet shortly. So the Jenkins Online Meetup is a community-driven virtual platform. Our goal is to inform, transfer knowledge, and share all things Jenkins. We are always looking for speakers. So if you have a compelling Jenkins story to share with the community, please reach out to us via that last link. And then before we begin, um, a couple of housekeeping items. This session is currently being recorded. We will share the link on the meetup page after the event. And if you have questions, please put them in the chat window as well as the Q&A window and our mentors and GSOC contributors will help to answer those questions throughout their presentation. You can also find us on the um, GSOC uh, Gitter channel as well as community discourse after this event. And lastly, the code of conduct is fully enforced here as well as throughout our community. If you're not sure what that is, it seem simply means show respect and kindness to um, others. So for the agenda, we'll quickly cover over uh, cover GSOC 2024 overview, have you meet our contributors, and then we'll let them uh, take you into the projects that they've been working on. So this is our eighth year in Google Summer of Code. In the eight years of Jenkins, uh, pro the Jenkins project has mentored 40 GSOC contributors. So that with the guidance and dedication from close to 100 mentors to date. So this year uh, we have five project ideas. Enhancing existing LLM model with domain specific Jenkins is worked on by Noor Almuhem. Implementing UI for Jenkins infrastructure statistics is worked on um, by Shlomo Dahan. Improved maintainability for repository permission updater is worked on by Philips Glantz. Using open read write recipes for plugin modernization is worked on by Sridhar Siva Kumar. And GitHub permissions as code is worked on by Don Yang Zhao. So we will go into presentations, uh, project presentations at this point. So our per first presenter, Shlomo, is not able to join us today. However, um, we will play a recording from him. So let me stop sharing for a moment and switch over to his recording. So it's gonna take me a couple of steps. Plug. Share my video again. Mm. No. We 
Do I need to enlarge the screen? Hi, I'm Shlomo, and I'm really excited to present to you my project for Google Summer of Code 2024. Um, a little bit about myself. I am a master's student at the University of Pennsylvania, and I have a previous background in finance. Um, this is my first experience working in open source, and it's been a really great experience, and I'm just really thrilled to be a part of this community. Okay, so this summer, I worked on the project called Implementing UI for Jenkins Infrastats, and the reason this project was created was to improve the existing UI and functionality of the site, which is lacking. Um, there was a lot of valuable information stored in this data that was just not accessible um, in the current state of the site. So this project was really designed to create a modern user-friendly interface for the Jenkins infrastructure stats and um, display the data in a way that's useful to those that need it. To build this, the website, we used React, um, Vite, Apache eCharts, and React Forest Graph, and some other libraries um, to build it up. And mo most importantly, the idea was to create a, a um, intuitive user experience um, and ensuring that there's consistency with the other Jenkins UI components. Um, some of the milestones that we've achieved this summer was creating a production-ready repo. So this repo that the new site is built on is already merged into the Jenkins uh, organization. And there's all the CI CD um, workflows in place to ensure that um, new contributors can jump in and, and start improving the site. Um, and that we created a fully redesigned site. So the entire site is overhauled, um, new UI, uh, uh, data visualizations, and all that stuff. So let's get right into it and jump into a demo. I'm going to show you how the old site looks first. Um, this way you can kind of get an idea of what needed to be improved and then how we improved it. So this is the current site, our current website as it stands. And if you see the actual site as a whole looks very simplistic, there's nothing um, very unique about it. And it doesn't really seem to match the other websites like Jenkins IO. Um, and then jumping into statistics in detail, you'll see that there's a lot of um, SVGs here that are just very poorly scaled and hard to access. If you look in, if you click into one of them, you'll see that the data level labels are not readable. So it's kind of a useless graph as it stands. And going for, into the monthly data, you'll see it's very similar. If you click on an SVG here, for example, that it kind of just looks like a giant straight line. And it's not very useful to those that need it. Um, moving on to the next page, the plugin installation trend, you'll see here that all the plugins are listed in alphabetical order. But um, when you click into it, all it shows you is a JSON file with, with some numbers that really make no sense to the end user. So unless you're going to be downloading this file and manipulating the data, creating your own data visualizations yourself, this data is pretty much useless to those that just want to access the infra data and, and take a quick peek at what's going on. Um, finally, I'll just focus on the dependency graph. Um, this wasn't terrible as it, as it was, but as when you remove filters, for example, it would be very difficult to see what's going on, It'd get very cluttered. And um, I think that the library used to build this it, it was is about 10 years old and outdated and no longer supported. So we wanted to focus on creating um, this dependency graph using modern tools. Okay, so the current site is here. This is what it looks like. Um, you can already tell that it's much more similar to the other Jenkins websites, um, like the toolbar, the, the navigation bar, and the, the footer. Um, jumping into the stats and detail page, um, the idea here was to create sort of like a dashboard where you can see high-level trends and compare with other high-level trends to see what's going on in the infra data. Um, you can also download, view the CSV, reset the zoom, zoom in and out. Um, and looking at the monthly data, you can also jump in and here, what's really interesting is that each one of those data points you can click into and then view an isolated graph for that particular data. So for example, if you want to see the plugins for April 2022, you can click right here and it takes you to a graph just for that. Same with every other data point here, like the notes by. Okay, so moving on to the next page, <clears throat> the plugin installation trend page. Um, as you remember before, it was just ordered in alphabetical order. There was no sorting or searching involved, um, which we've implemented here. And to highlight what the overall trend is for this plugin in terms of installations, 
we've included a little trend line here that, that just kind of makes it easy for someone to jump in and see, okay, this plugin is getting more popular or decreasing in popularity. Um, then when you click on a particular plugin, you'll see that it launches a modal. And here you have um, four relevant charts for each one of them. Um, monthly installations, monthly installation percentage relative to Jenkins installations, installations by version, and installations by version as a pie chart. Um, you'll have this for every single one of them. And it just makes it really easy to take a quick glance at, at the plugin's um, data, as opposed to before where it just showed you a JSON file and it was didn't make really any sense. Um, finally, I'm going to skip the plugin version by Jenkins version page because this was just very similar to how it was before. We didn't make much changes besides um, changing the look a little bit. But going back to the plugin um, dependency graph, here was another major change where we um, scratched the old, we scrapped the old um, method of using, doing it and we used a 3D render to create a 3D dependency graph. Um, this one is really cool. It's fun to play around with. You can move nodes around. Um, you can see details when you hover over. And if you click on a particular plugin, it'll take you to that dependency graph for that plugin. Um, this is just really useful. Um, I've gotten feedback that it's being used on a daily basis by plugin maintainers. And um, yeah, just overall the feel and the responsiveness is much better than it was before. So going back to the presentation, um, some of the problems we faced were with, the, some of the challenges I would say we faced were with data retrieval. Um, <clears throat> so collecting the data was a bit of a challenge because um, there was so much of it, and I, the, the way we decided to do it was just to take the old repo and use it as a sub-module for this one, and that's how we're pulling in the data. So there's definitely room for improvement there, and it might be a good idea um, for the 2025 GSOC um, if someone wants to work on that. Uh, other, other challenges we faced were performance and responsiveness. Um, definitely when dealing with this much data and all these 3D rendering and, and all that stuff, um, this uh, performance definitely is a challenge to get right. And that was a, a fun, fun experience to work on and, and just make sure that the site operates smoothly. So some of the key takeaways are that open source collaboration is as much about communication as it is about coding. Um, just working with mentors and the team leads on making sure that everyone's on the right track, on the same page of what the product to be delivered should be and how it should be delivered is very important. Um, another big thing is adaptability. There's a lot of tools here that I wasn't familiar with that I had to get familiar with very quickly in order to build the site. And it's a useful skill to have. Um, documentation, clean code, time management, all that kind of stuff is very critical when working in GSOC and just making sure you are you have like set milestones that you can always go back to and, and set goals for yourself to accomplish. Um, and then finally, the open source community has just been really supportive. And oh, if I've ever been stuck, you know, it just, it's one message away from getting like all the help you can imagine. So yeah, that's about it. Um, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and I hope the site is useful to those that need it. Okay, let me stop sharing for now. And then I think I need to promote Alex, right? Yes. Yep. Promote Alex, got it. So I will start share, sharing again, and then Philip, it's your turn. Thanks. Okay. Hi, my name is Philip, and I have made this GSOC the improved maintainability of the permission updater. Uh, next slide, please. Um, I'm a software engineer at a German company that working as a software engineer there. And in my last time or in my past, I worked, I re already sometimes with Jenkins, but now it's take back to giving something back to Jenkins. And that's why I'm here. Next slide, please. Something about the RPU is like that's maintain or manage primary the permissions for other contributors on Jenkins and handles the permissions inside of GitHub. And so far, everything is stored in a YAML file and put it via REST API into the GitHub and add the factory. And... Sorry. What? Everything? It's fine. Oh. Um, next slide, please. It's, it's fine. Um... 
Is this one the correct more. slide? One more. No, next one. Why does it do that? <laughs> it looks like a history. This one. Yeah. What's the problem? Currently, the RPU is written on all query ones and there's no genetics tests and everything else is missing to prove state, uh, stability or quality. And it's make very hard for other contributors to improve the code or hold the code in current Java versions. That's the main problem. And now we currently solve that or we will resolve that because my GSOC is not finished yet. And that we can all go to the next slide. And we have solved so far some problems there. We I put it some designs pattern inside to encapsulate um, APIs from the implementations. I made so many facades and builder patterns to make the code more readable and nearer to the KISS pattern. And the first step before we made that, um, I converted every query script into Java code and that improved our Reddit execution time so far. And we had already merged everything from Groovy to Java, but we reverted because of some mistake and permission up, uh, issues. But the improvements was already from 30 minutes to three minutes down. And that was really cool, but now I need to continue that. We can go over to the next slide. And currently I cannot pro promote any code there because it's too large inside of the project. That's why there's no demo. But if you're interested to see it, what I have changed it, please check out the repository or ask and the Jitter for that. Now I'll go with next, the takeaways that uh, I made wholly of a GSOC in this project. Um, it's very important for me to communicate with uh, my mentors because I made normal work by side uh, in GSOC and it helps a lot to planning my day also. Um, it makes me much more easier to troubleshoot problems if I've been in progress. And also on the other side, um, my English got better as before and I learned it also, it's very similar to my normal work and it's a very good preparation for Scrum-based work in normal companies. Next slide, please. Now it's question time. If some time over, Alicia has already said, we can put it later. Thanks to Alexander as a mentor for me, also for Bruno, uh, sometimes it's by side for me. And also as US Jenkins com community to invited me to have the chance uh, giving some feedback to G uh, via GSOC to the community. Thanks, Philip. Um, do we have questions? Well, I think we have time for questions. We have time for questions, but we don't have questions for the time being. Don't be shy, ask some. Mm -hmm. You can put your questions in the chat window or the Q&A window. So we'll give that like a minute. And then if there's no questions, we will move on to the next presenter. Oh, two questions, woohoo. Okay, so why there is no live demo? <laughs> it will come. Uh, uh, some projects will share demos. I think two of them will share demos. But for the RPU, I'm not so sure it makes sense and it would take some time to make a demo. And what was the first project? Um, Shlomo is not there. So <laughs> he won't be able to make a demo either. Okay, so, and I think uh, Dan Young doesn't have a demo yet. But yes, two demos by the end of uh, the webinar. Second question from Aaron Conaway. Are there any size limitations to the repos when being processed? Um, before it was single threaded and very slow. And after my query conversation, the pair was already much better reverted. Um, I decided from our side to rework it into a reactive um, stuff. 
that has the ending up that we can process it with the maximum thread size as is possible and reduce it the execution time from 2000 or 5000 files we have uh reduce the time for 30 minutes to three minutes and that's already very big improvement from my side okay thank you philip i hope it answers your question aaron yeah thumbs up from aaron thanks a lot aaron thanks a lot philip I think we're done with the question for Philip. May we switch to the next presentation? Yes, let's do that. So, Danye. Yes. And uh, uh, hi, everyone. This is the final presentation of my Google Summer for Code project. My project is to automate the GitHub permission in Raspberry information updater for RPU, and I'm happy with to work with Alex as a mentor. So next slide, please. Yes, and just a quick introduction. My name is Dan Yang, and I recently graduated with a master's in IT from the University of Queensland. And I'm new to the open source community, and I'm eager to contribute and learn. I'm grateful that this project could be a good start to my open source journey. So let's dive in. Next slide. So, yes. And if you are or if you were a RPU user, you might know how to add your name and submit PR to the YAML file to gain permission. However, what you might not know is that after PR is merged, update to the GitHub team permissions are also are still handled manually. Next slide, please. That's the reason why our project exists. We aim to enhance the RPU by creating a solution that manages the GitHub team and permissions as code. The current system oversees 2,600 2, GitHub teams with all team modification handled manually by the hosting team. My contribution aims to automate this process, boosting productivity by counting down the manual workloads. Now let's, uh, let's explore how we're going to make this happen. Next slide, please. Uh, in this update, we are introduced a new YAML structure for managing the GitHub team permissions. This permission, the permissions folder was organized by the Raspberry, which is Raspberry potentially have the multiple teams and they each requiring different roles. So in this new structure, we are add, uh, we are added fields to manage the team roles and to differentiate between the Jenkins community username and their GitHub counterpart. Next slide, please. So this is another different. Next slide. Thank you. And uh, we have used several tools and technology in this project. The modern Poma symbol configuration help us to manage project built separately from the RPU and the facility independence update and the maintenance. We use snake YAML to fetch, to fetch YAML file content. The GitHub API is used to retrieve and manage data, team data. GitHub actions are set up to run after each merge to keep our project consistently integrated. And for testing, we use the Mokto Energy Unit to validate our changes. Next slide, please. The developer of the list project has followed a complex path. So she by the real world challenge encounter that diverged from our initial plans as we progress and several improvements remain to be addressed to ensure that our solution effectively to meet the real world need. At first, due to the potential dependency with the Jenkins community and GitHub usernames, the YAML structure will be adjusted to include both. And second, the Terraform will be integrated to both the security and streamline management across the GitHub flows. And third, a one of backfill process will be implemented to thin data from the GitHub with the YAML from configurations before the initial deployment to ensure consistency. Next slide, please. So in closing, I want to thank everyone who supported me on this journal. A big shout out to my mentor, Alex, for his guidance and support, and thanks to Alyssa for adjusting her schedule across the time zone and for her advice on managing our project. 
And I also grateful for the Chris for always being ready to help and respond quickly. And thanks to Bruno for being part of my our meeting every week. So that concludes my presentation. And I'm open to have any question you might have. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, we have questions, one from Aaron. Thank you, Aaron, for all your questions. What advantages will Terraform provide? Yes, and uh, uh, about the leads, we have a uh, um, discussion about the why we need to use the Terraform. That's because that uh, if we, if, uh, we now um, we we basically you can um, ready to use the GitHub action, but this thing that has um, maybe some problem of that, so we must promise that the, each ring is the size that we can now to find out some the the, the other um, problem of the that when when this ring. So Terraform will will record the. The, in each state of the commit, and they will protect the security because even that our our data is not to uh, secret is not the secret but sensitive, but the uh, the the grant is sensitive because we grant the people they have the permission to assess the respiratory. So use the terraform it can prevent this uh, security problem to to be happened. I Thank hope you, I. Yeah, that's uh, okay. Aaron is commenting. Tracking state is always good. Thumbs up. Thank you, Aaron. Um, no please. other open questions for Tammy. Chris, you wanted to say something. Yeah, can we promote event data as well? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. No other question. Okay, then let's move on to Sridhar. We will and speed as you want the current visual for trick item for Sridhar, your audio is going in now for me. Yeah, is, for me also, Sridhar, oh, your sound wait, is wait really minute. bad. Uh, can you hear me better or still the same? That's better. I sound better. for you. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. So let me raise my left. So my mentors are Valentine, Bruno, Rajiv, and Bavianto. Next slide, please. Okay. What is the current problem in our Jenkins ecosystem? So the Jenkins ecosystem is mainly of plugins. So it consists of nearly 20, 100 plus plugins, and which are, and the main problem in the scenario is most of the plugins are outdated. And also there are many kinds of actions which can be automated, which are currently doing, man which are done manually right now. And also there are so many plugins which are up for adoption, which means there is no current maintenance or active maintenance for those plugins. So this makes the plugin uh, falling behind the monetization process. So it's kind of like, it's more outdated because of these scenarios. Next slide, please. Oh, next slide, please. Yeah. Did it move? So this is the yeah this is the screenshot from uh, the Jenkins IO website where it shows the uh, supported Java policy for the Jenkins core version. So you can just see that the weekly releases of uh, the latest weekly releases two point four six three and only supports Java seventeen and twenty one. And while the long term support uh, two point four two six point one only supports Java eleven seventeen and twenty eight. In, the, in these two releases, they already just dropped the versions JDK 8 for, uh, for the core version. So what makes this is we should also, also, we should also add a lot of plugins to make sure to have these kinds of Java versions in their, their building scenario. Next slide, please. Okay, how do we try to solve this? So we build a generic tool, which is designed to automate the monetization of Jenkins plugins. But how? How does it do that? So basically what our tool does is it just clones the repository from the remote get the repository and it will just try to update the transformations based on this open recipe. 
So open web recipes are kind of like a structured program which runs on the plugins to, to make those kinds of transformations. And finally, it just validates and commits the changes. If the validation gets succeed, then it will just create a PR in the respective plugin repositories. That's our tool does. And also we can just go and visit the tool architecture in the link provided below and the amount of available recipes in the recipe catalog. So next slide, please. Okay, so in the process of modernizing the plugins, we have just faced an issue, which is modernizing highly outdated plugins. So in the current scenario, we can just see that uh, see that in an image which uses HTTP URL instead of HTTPS. So when you just go and search HTTP URL of the gen report.jenkins.ca.org, you will just uh, read that the 2404 error. Since uh, report.jenkins is the CA only supports HTTPS. So this makes old plugins to fail the build. So the, the plugin doesn't even compile because of these kinds of scenarios. So how do we make those kinds of recipes to make the plugin compile? So have this builder and minimal build Java plugin, which make the plugins to make these kinds of changes in the repository and make the plugin to be compilable. And what else the tool can do? So other than conversion, like uh, transformations happening in the plugin repositories, you can also extract the metadata, which can be consumed by other external uh, repositories like by plugin health score system. So this plugin health score system is mainly used to uh, evaluate the health score of a plugin and we can just give a, more, much more data to that system to enhance its scoring, scoring uh, evaluation. Yeah. Next slide, please. Okay, what's the name? So these are the things that we just do, uh, done in the past few weeks. So we have just made an data integration, which allows us to automate the forking, cloning, peer creation, and much more. Also, we just added in caching mechanisms to, to, to store the metadata and, and some kind of like that. And also, we have just updated the metadata collector, which allows us to use the proper JDK in the compilation phase. So the metadata collector also, also have a proper JDK, which, which can be updated from that. Next slide, please. OK. Can I share my screen, right? Yeah, let me stop sharing. Okay. Oh, can you see the screen, right? Not yet. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yes, it works now. Yep, me too. You can just see the GitHub page, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is the current plugin, which is an only tab plugin that we are just going to apply in a recipe uh, for uh, upgradation. So what the recipe does up here is we'll just remove the usage of this desk case, uh, desk case framework and just use the latest uh, Jupyter, the unit Jupyter test case instead of this one. So we just we're just kind of going to apply that recipe on this tab plugin repository. So you can just see the file name and you can just see this, which is a uh, test case class. Okay. Let me switch to my ID. So I just already made all the setup. You can just see up here. So in this, we can just see, I've just mentioned the plugin tab using the P option and, and the recipe named Michael Jamie test case with the OR option. So I just use this keep push, push, keep push uh, option to skip the push in the remote repositories. So let me just run this thing. So what does up here is initially starting the plugin monitor, is there, it will just try to fetch the plugin metadata in, in the local system. So let me switch to, yeah, this is the cache of, this is where the cache is available. Not You can just go and uh, look up the update, sorry, fresh metadata here. So let me switch to the directory. Yeah, so we can just see a plugin metadata file. Let me, yeah, so this is the plugin metadata is coming from that uh, place. And from this, you can just find, uh, wait a minute. Yeah, so you can just find the version of Java 17. We should be used in the compilation process. So this is a kind of like example of this metadata used in our own, own tool. So, and you can just also see the other kinds of metadata which is fetched from the fish for the plugin. Okay, let me move back to the thing. So yeah, you can just see the plugin is starting with the compilation of the DK 17, which is fetched from the met plugin metadata. And then, yeah, the compilation process is done. And now it's running the recipes. So while it's running the recipes, it will just try and change the uh, this framework to the thing the JUnit Jupyter uses. So let me see that in the program. It will take a couple of minutes to run the recipes on, on the plugin. So let us wait.
Okay, so the process is done. So we can just uh, move to our, our system to change with, so to check whether the changes are made. So I'm just navigating to the path of the file, so which is up here. Yep. Now we can just see the test case class is removed and which is replaced by the API test. Yeah, voila, we have just done and our tool is just working up there. Also, we can just see the plugin is also been verified with the JDK after the changes. So as we are just using the keep push commit, so it just failed to commit the changes and it just uh it is just it's giving the push and pull request for the tap plugin. Yeah, that's it all the word too. I hope you just liked our demo and I'll just stop sharing my screen. Do you have additional slides that we need to share? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so what are the challenges that we just faced so far? So as I mentioned before, so the main challenge is to making the highly outdated plugins to compile. And I've just showed an example to make compilable plugin for Java 8.1. So there are plugins which uses JDK version 5, 6, and 7, which need to be covered in our upcoming cases. And also, there is a case where we should, we should be able to switch between JDKs for highly outdated plugins. For example, uh, the outdated plugins are currently using maximal amount of plugins is currently using JDK 8, and our tool is only applicable to compile in JDK 17. So this is switching between JDK, which is the challenge we have just faced so far. Next slide, please. Yeah, what are the future plans? So right now the metadata is currently storing in the local system, right? So it should be should be it should be populated in a common place so that it can be used by other tools. So there are discussions going on here, which which we will just make a repo where the common metadata will be stored and consumed by other tools. Also integrating more recipes to make the make more number of changes using our tool. And also finally we just try to integrate the plugin with the external systems like PHS. The next slide, please. Yeah, questions session. I'm open to questions. Okay, no open questions for the time being. Give it a couple of seconds. Yeah, of while course. we move on. Oh, Aaron. <laughs> Thank you, Aaron. Uh, is there a matrix of minimum supported software versions? What is okay? Wait a minute. Okay, so we have this maintain. I'm not sure what the minimum supported software versions meant up here. Which kind of software can you end up about that? Shrita, your audio is going in and out again. Yeah. Uh, maybe Valentin, uh, Valentin, you would like to help with answering this question. Then. Yes, uh, sure, no problem. Uh, well, I'm not sure to understand exactly the question, but I will try to do my best. Uh, so the CLI by itself uh, need uh, Java 17, uh, but then to compile the plugin, uh, we are able to compile a plugin from Java 8 to Java 21. So all the version uh, between, uh, in between. Yeah, and there would be some manual intervention uh, to upgrade from Java 5 to 6 to 7 to 8 before the tool can do its magic, right? Yes, there are very, very old plugins that are still compiled uh, with version older than 8. Uh, but the point is that those GDK are not even available for downloads, so it's difficult to manage uh, this. So we decided that for the moment, uh, we will uh, keep the minimum of Java Java 8. So Aaron says, some that uh, I think we answer his question. Thanks a lot, Aaron. Thanks, Valentin, and thanks, Fridal. Thank you. Yeah, finally, thank you for your patience. And, and I would like to thank all my mentors, and especially Valentine for his active contributions over the whole period of time and also Bruno for opening issues and uh -huh. and uh, like finding all kinds of all kinds of the issues arise and in the beginning stage that uh, so that we can just improve our tool and for and also Rajiv and Bumantu for their reviews. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Thank Thanks you. community. Thanks Shridar. Sonor, your turn. Yeah. Hi everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. So um, 
Okay. Okay. Uh, we will be talking about our last project, which is enhancing LLM using Jenkins knowledge. Uh, the project is done by me, and I have Chris, Prono, Harsh, and Shivai as project mentors. Uh, so next slide, please. Yes. Uh, yeah, we will be walking you through those points. Uh, I'll be sharing some information about me and the problem, our timeline, and what we have accomplished. Uh, then we'll show you some demo and some findings we have. Uh, next slide. Um, also, I'll be sharing what I have learned so far, my next steps, and conclude eventually. So yeah, next slide. Yeah, about me, uh, 10 minute recap. Uh, I'm Noor, a software engineer, and I have started contributing to Jenkins this year, and I'm so interested to continue contributing here. Uh, I attached my contact info if you would like to ask more about uh, the project and any Google Summer of Code related matters. So next slide. So yeah, um, what was the problem so far? Uh, the three main points which made uh, this problem valuable are that uh, at this time, uh, Jenkins don't have an AI-driven uh, assistive technology to help Jenkins user. So GenAI tries to combine the capabilities of large language model uh, with the knowledge that usually uh, a Jenkins expert has. We also uh, provide a friendly UI uh, so users can interact with the model. Uh, and yeah, instead of looking for answers in many places, um, GenAI might provide uh, you with your answer uh, for any question. So next slide. Uh, yeah, eventually after three months of hard working, we could provide Jenkins knowledge collected from different sources, uh, uploaded on our GitHub repository. Also, the final pre-processing to clean up all this raw data, uh, an open source model uh, fine-tuned on this Jenkins knowledge. Uh, also a system uh, uh, with a friendly UI to talk to the model. We also provided the documentation of all the effort done, referencing all the previous work we were building on. Oh, next slide. Yeah, a uh, quick recap. Uh, we have already mentioned uh, most of the steps in the midterm presentation. We were at first on uh, data collection from Jenkins knowledge, blog posts, community questions, and some external sources like Stack Overflow. Uh, we worked on data refinement where we removed uh, all unuseful blocks like HTML tags and URLs, also utilizing the documentation, uh, another, uh, LLM to create a, a question answer pairs out of the documentation we have. Uh, after that, we worked on uh, the system, uh, the interaction where we used also React and Flask to build our system. Uh, next slide. Yeah, the stage of fine tuning our model and optimize resource usage. Uh, the full details of uh, this stage are explained more in our final documentation. I also be sharing some snippets of this documentation. Uh, we have also a stage of uh, converting our model to the binary format and be able to run it locally on our, our CPU using our local machines resources. And also finally, uh, we were trying to provide a trial of uh, using Llama 3 instead of Llama 2. Uh, but as we, um, yeah, as it wasn't uh, available for open source users so far, so uh, we kept this trial in our future work. Next slide. Yeah, so all about uh, phase one was mentioned already in details. Uh, so what we actually were been doing uh, until now, we have been working on the fine tuning of the model and it was an iterative step. Uh, this step required uh, much time to train for only one epoch. Uh, it was around an hour to go over the whole data uh, one time. And yeah, you can imagine training for a thousand epoch how it will look like. Also, we have uh, been working on enabling users uh, to run the model locally. So we use Llama CBB to convert our model to the GGML binary format. Uh, so it can be running using CPU only. But it's actually uh, gonna take uh, a lot of from resources. So another quantization step was required at this stage 
to end up having a model quantized in adpads so we can run it uh, locally uh, and it will fit in around six gigabyte of our uh, memory ram uh, we provided also a final documentation built on our initial proposal including all references or the previous work we were building on also included a readme on how to run continue training and the quantization also uploading on hugging face and all the necessary stuff uh, next slide yeah uh, i'll be moving to show you some demo okay uh, let me know when you can see my screen okay starting Yep. Okay. Yeah. We can see it. Okay. So for uh, the product itself, it's uh, uh, as I mentioned in the midterm, uh, we have basically two pages: the page of uh, the landing page and also the chat page. For the landing page, you can find more about our project. But what I actually wanted to uh, to show you our final uh, documentation. Uh, I'll be running through this. Um, Quickly, uh, we have uh, some uh, explanation for the problem itself, what uh, motivated us for this problem. Also, the data set, the references we use to collect this data. So if anyone would like to go over this data again, and uh, the, the tools we use to collect this data and the LLM we use also to get the question answer pairs. We also included some uh, future work sections. So if you'd like to go over this documentation and find more about our future work. Uh, the training parameters, we, we used also some uh, information or necessary uh, explanation of uh, some of these parameters. Uh, we also included the pipeline of the training uh, that we have in our notebooks, uh, the prompt uh, format we have and all necessary information. Uh, also included some information about the quantization, what we have been doing and uh, our uh, conversational chat at the end. We referenced uh, the, uh, the previous work we were building on and uh, also included our future work of uh, retrieval augmented generation, which will uh, be explained a bit uh, uh, in next slides. Uh, we also included uh, the readme. The readme included uh, how to run and also uh, some uh, information about uh, the fine tuning itself, how to continue training the model. Also, the convert uh, the conversion of the model from uh, to uh, the GGML format, uh, so you can run it locally on your local machine. So this is about the documentation. Um, yeah, can we go back to the slides? Yeah, let me share my screen again. Just give me. Are we on the right slide, Nora? Yeah, I can. I I need to add, to access the meeting only. Give a moment. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we stopped on the program outcomes. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, I wanted to mention um one more information that I didn't mention in the demo. That uh kindly uh note that at the first at first time you're running uh, our chatbot, it's gonna take uh a little bit uh, more time to download the model first on your machine, so which is around six gigabyte, but this is gonna be for the first time only. And you can begin interacting with it and running the back end uh, more times without uh, need to download the model uh, each time. So for the project program outcomes, this program gave me uh, the opportunity to learn more about uh, Jenkins technology. Also uh, dealing with large language models, investigating different approaches and manage resource usage, uh, GitHub and get best practice. I've learned many new things about ERs, code review and releases and many other stuff. Finally, I learned more about uh, that there's actually no stupid questions and the value of communication to make any project a success. Uh, next slide. Uh, about the next steps, uh, the solution can be achieved through uh, 
different approaches. Example of that, trying LAMA, LAMA 3 performance on the same data as it should outperform LAMA 2 because of the fact that it was uh, fine, uh, pre-trained on over 15 trillion tokens uh, with the data set, which is larger seven times. We also can uh, investigate uh, the usage of retrieval augmented generation with documentations, uh, which also can help us achieve our objective. Um, next slide. Yeah, um, finally, I wanted to thank Jenkins and the org admins for the opportunity of working on this challenging problem. Uh, I enjoyed my time here and getting to know awesome people and working with them. Uh, Google Summer of Code uh, for organizing this program and also Gen AI team for their great collaboration throughout the project. Uh, I was so grateful for their uh, collaboration and understanding. Uh, finally, um, you can find more, uh, sorry, next slide. Yeah, finally, you can find more about uh, the project through these links. And um, next slide. Yeah, happy to answer your questions. Do we have questions so far? It does not seem like it. Okay, there was a question from a guy known, um, named Bruno Verachten. Uh, I don't know who he is. Uh, <laughs> so, um, does it work for real? Would you be able to ask Jenny a question, not specific, a general question about Jenkins, and would it be able to answer today? Uh, today in the demo we have, uh, I didn't run it so before the presentation. So I couldn't do that for the demo, but I can run it. And if we have time before uh, ending the presentation, we can just ask it. So you needed to warm it, it up before asking a question, right? Or something like yeah. that. Okay. Uh, we have a question from Michon. Michon, uh, I don't know the correct pronunciation. Sorry about that. What is the cost of running it on cloud? And what is the cost of training? Okay, um, yeah, I'll be answering for the training first. Uh, we used uh, some uh, open source resources like the resources provided by uh, Co uh, Google Colab and also Kaggle. Uh, it was about 16 gigabyte of uh, VRAM uh, on the GPU. And it was provided, for example, on Kaggle for about uh, 13 hours a week. So the cost of training was uh, nothing because we used the free resources. We also, um, during fine tuning, we tried to optimize the resource usage. So we used different approaches like loading the model in uh, for bit precision, also uh, using LoRa uh, and uh, quantize the training of weights. Uh, and eventually merge uh, the lower weights to the model and having uh, our fine-tuned model. So the cost of the training was uh, negligible. You can also try training the, your own model using our notebooks provided on the repo. Uh, for running it on the cloud, I'm not sure uh, if the question about the host, hosting the um, model or... Uh... No, I guess it's just running the application with the downloading model. So uh, we tried it on Gitpod for free. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, that's for free. But the thing is, it's only 50 hours a month. So that's not possible. But in the cloud, it's just a Node.js application, right? So it would run just about anywhere for free to not expensive, I would say. Uh, the most costly part is, of course, the training, which Noor got for free because of limitations in the uh, time slots you, you can use. But I hope this answers your question. Chris, you would like to add something? Um, no, I think it's like, okay. we just consider like hosting, but we don't have the resources. So um, I think it's best not to host it yet because uh, um, unless we have a budget for it, unless we have consensus in the community that that's needed, otherwise we wouldn't go for it. Thank you, Chris. We have another yeah. question, it, which is, why uh, do we need to download while using it for the first time instead of using an API call? Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Uh, 
using an API needed hosting the model somewhere. And uh, we, were, we were not having these resources of uh, hosting the model somewhere and interact with the model using through or through APIs only. Uh, so we, we are converting the model to the binary format and running it on our local machines. Uh, why we need to download it? You need to download it to run it basically on your local machine. So uh, it was for the first time only running the backend or the system. Uh, and if you are trying to run it again, uh, you will not be need a need uh, to uh, download the model each time. It's only for the first time and it caches somewhere, cache it somewhere in your device so you can uh, use it uh, anytime. So how big is it? It's two gigabytes, four gigabytes? Yeah, it's about uh, two gigabytes or six gigabytes. I provided two. Uh, versions, but uh, the version I've been mentioning in our in my README so far, uh, it was uh, about two gigabytes. Um, yeah, yeah, for okay. downloading. Thank you. Uh, if any of you in the audience is interested in participating, this is an open source project. Even if Google Summer of Code is reaching its end, the project in itself is not finished so of course you're welcome to participate create issues try to solve them uh do some pull requests uh, start conversations and so on we're still there and we'd be happy to do something together thank you yeah we also have our future work open in uh like two or three issues right um yeah, yeah we, where we can where you can uh just go ahead and contribute thank you Noor. um I don't see any other questions. Okay, so we got okay. about four minutes left. So let's move on to our last slide. So thank you to all of our GSOC contributors. Um, well done and congratulations on completing this program. Um, additional resources. Um, additional resources could be found on Jenkins.io. Uh, for more discussions, join us on the Discourse and Gitter channels. And if you'd like to be involved in future GSOC programs, we'd love to welcome you as uh, mentors. We are always in need of mentors. So with that said, we, we're going to go ahead and close this out um, by thanking all of our mentors without them this program is not possible. So our, our mentors are highly valued and greatly appreciated. And thanks to the five GSOC contributors, we appreciate your contributions to the project. We hope you'll come back and continue to contribute to the program um, or to the project and even um, come back as co-mentors in the future. So with that said, thanks everybody for joining us and um, hope to see you on the discussion channels. Have a great one. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.